Hello, I'm Dr. Bill Peacock, a psychologist in Baltimore, Maryland, and a member of the Board of Directors of the American Fertility Association. I've been involved in the field of fertility issues for well over 25 years now, and one of the things that has struck me is the lack of knowledge in the general population about male factor infertility. The general population tends to be quite well aware of female issues involved in infertility, and perhaps it's because there have been women who have come forward and been spokespersons for this uh, significant problem, where men have really not come forward and spoken about it. We could speculate on why that is so, uh, but I'll leave that for sociologists and other psychologists to take up at some other point in time. I did want to address some remarks to men who are considering having a family in the future. It's important to be aware that almost 40% of infertility involves a male factor, and there are some things that you can do to uh, improve the odds that you will be facing. Uh, obviously, taking care of one's health is an important issue, and so engaging in heart-healthy exercise, uh, a heart-healthy diet, um, and uh, other matters of general good health makes an awful lot of sense. I mention exercise because uh, men uh, tend to be uh, interested in, in maintaining their uh, physique, and some men have even taken to using anabolic steroids to help build muscle mass. Of course, nothing could be uh, worse for uh, your fertility health than taking steroids because they tend to uh, signal the brain to shut down the production of sperm, which, as you know, is essential in producing children. Um, other health issues um, obviously play a role here, and so uh, a reasonable diet, uh, avoiding things like uh, tobacco and judicious use of alcohol would be important. It's also important to consider environments in which you may work. So men who work in environments that have toxins in them need to take extra precautions to make sure that they're protected from ingesting those toxins, which may have an impact on sperm quality. Um, and finally, one has to keep in, in, into, take into account the fact that age can have a role in uh, male, male factor infertility. Uh, not quite in the same way that it does with women, where uh, egg production uh, reduces with age and, in fact, ends at a certain point. Um, it appears that sperm production is consistent throughout the lifespan. However, with age, there has been research which has identified the fact that chromosomal abnormalities can take place at a higher rate and have an impact on one's ability to produce viable fetuses. So, taking all these things into account, there are um, factors which you can have some control over if you're a man who is intent on having a family, and it would be wise for you to read up more about this. Uh, one of the pleasures, if you will, of working for the American Fertility Association is the fact that we have taken male factor infertility as one of our focal issues and have partnered with organizations such as the Centers for Disease Control and the Men's Health Network to bring about greater awareness of this area. And I'm very proud of the work that we have done in this area um, because I think it is important for men to be aware of all of the issues that are necessary in their own reproductive health. Thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, that you will look at uh, other issues, uh, other information from our uh, webpage um, so that you can learn more about male factor infertility.